may the blood of Jesus move over our sick continent. Welcome to the hour of solution. To our world, this is a hopeless situation, but to the church, it is a hopeful situation. There is an emergence of a mighty army. Now go to Philippians chapter number two, chapter number one, and we read Paul's prayer for the church of Philippi. Paul made certain prayers available to the churches. And one of his prayers was to the church in Philippi. Philippians chapter number one, verse nine through 11. And this I pray that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and in all discerning, discernment. Your love for God will abound. Not, not in this stage, your love for God will grow. The believer has a win-win situation. If you die, you go to heaven. If you don't, you continue God's program. Death is not a loss to the believer. For me to live is Christ, to die is gain, Paul said. But you at least you are not dying now by the grace of God. All right. That you may approve the things that are excellent. That you may be sincere without offense to the day of Christ. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, the glory and the praise of God. Look at his prayer for the church of Ephesus. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 to 20. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. From whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That he will grant you according to the riches of his glory. To be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted that you being and grounded you be, must be rooted and grounded in love otherwise you will not be able to comprehend with all the saints what the width length height and depth are in god this is the only way you can comprehend God's depth is by being not only rooted, but fruited. To know the love of Christ, which passes all knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And part of the fullness of God for the triumphant church is security, preservation, protection from harm and danger, including plagues. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly ab abundantly above that we ask or think according to the power and well, where is that power amen? amen where is that power where the power is in the believer the power is in you the child of god the work of god is rendered immobile in the earth without the express consent of a willful believer. I will not let God use a donkey to speak on my behalf, neither a cock to crow, because I refuse to do my work. I will not let the stones cry out. Now to him who is able, our God is able. Our God is able through the intercession of the church to push back the dark clouds and to say to this plague, your tenor is over. The month of March is ending and you are marching out. Amen. 
Let's look at a few Old Testament prayers. Daniel chapter 9. I'm from verse number 4. Hmm. Say, I intend to pray. I intend to pray. Say, I intend to pray. Can you imagine that, um, you know, such we, many people shouldn't congregate at the same time in, you know, like that, and it's not healthy, so they pass on the virus and so forth. There are people who are already weak. They are weakened by fear. They won't even meet anywhere. But the interesting thing is that they go to a workplace where 50 people gather. But they won't as much come near people where 10 people gather. The hypocrisy is just up to the ceiling. That's why Paul prays that we have love rooted in God. If it is easy for you to go to work, where there are human beings there, not robots, who can equally infect you, you should know that nowhere is safe. As African Pigeon English. Only God, only God guarantees our safety. I stand to be corrected by the Prime Minister of Italy in tears says we have exhausted every means possible to curb this. There don't seem to be an end in sight. Then he turns to say we can only hope in the highest God. Daniel chapter number 9 from verse 4 to 19. And I prayed to the Lord my God and made it confession and said, O Lord, great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant and mercy with those who love him. He keeps his covenant and what? With those who, who love him. When you love a person, it is not what you get from them. It is really what you give to them. Because... Majority of Christendom, our love for God is based on what he will give us. But God keeps his covenant with those he knows want to do something for him. You can't love a man, you can't love a woman and not contribute towards their total well-being. It's just flimsy. Those are just words. Love acts. Love does. It says he keeps covenant and mercy with those who love him and those who keep his commandments. And it says we have sinned and committed iniquity. We have done wickedly and rebelled, even departing from your precepts and your judgments. Neither have we heeded your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings and princes and to our fathers and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongs to you, but to us shame of face as it is this day, to the men of Judah, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, to all Israel, those near and those who are far off, and we are including those who are far off, in all countries to which you have driven them because of unfaithfulness which they have committed against you. O Lord, to us belong shame or face to our kings, our princes, our fathers, for we have sinned against you. He repeats. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness. Say mercy and forgiveness. Mercy and forgiveness. Though we have rebelled against him. We have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws which he set before us by his servants the prophets. 
Yes, all Israel. Now, undoubtedly, there were some pious or righteous people there. But when Daniel is making prayer, inclusive himself, he says, all of us have sinned. Now, let me show you something. Psalm 103, verses 1 to 3. I know there's a long passage. If God will forgive sin, he will heal our land. Bless the Lord of my soul and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord of my soul and forget not all his benefits. Now watch it. Who forgives our iniquities? Iniquities. I won't have time to teach on transgression, iniquities, and sins. They are not the same. But anything with quitties, shins, sins on it, ain't good. Amen. Amen. Don't let your mind roam because I'm sitting and standing, sitting and standing. You are... You sit through, so why don't I also sit? It's a new thing I'm adopting, praise God. Ministry can be very stressful, you know. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who heals all your diseases? Now, who forgives all your iniquity? Hmm? If God cannot forgive your iniquity, he can heal your disease. So if God can forgive the iniquity of the nations, he will heal the plague. Now how much blood of Jesus do we need for the continent of the earth? How much? Thank you. A drop. Because... The prophet said the nations are like a drop of water in a bucket. The nations. When you put all the continents together, that's how Jehovah views the nations. They are like a drop of water in a bucket. May the blood of Jesus move over our sick continents may the redemptive work of calvary not just end with the church but into all the world to bring salvation healing and deliverance to people populace wherever people are let them have an opportunity to know that Christ the King, he reigns. So Daniel identifies with the sins of his people. Let's read the prayer of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. <sighs> Glory to God. John chapter 17. And this, I will end with this one. John chapter 17, 6 through 26. If we will pray, we'll see God. If we'll pray, we'll see an answer. If we'll pray and have godly wisdom for our people in authority, we'll see a cessation of this pandemic. And God will give our leaders wisdom. And they will act quickly and move quickly. It says, I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me. And they have kept your word. Now they have known all the things which you have given to me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me. And they have received them, have known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those 
whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I'm glorified in them. This is the Lord Jesus offering prayer. And I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me. So God's keeping power is for those of you who have believed on the name of the Son of God. Amen. Verse 12 says, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept. The word keeping keeps coming up. And none of them will be lost except for the son of perdition. That the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you and these things I speak in the world. That they may have what? My joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world. Just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world. That you should keep them from the evil one. Lift your right hand. Say, may God keep me from the evil one. Say, I'm, I'm going to be kept from the evil one. By the power of God. Because I'm a part of the body of Jesus. Now, for those of you watching that are not a part of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is your opportunity to simply recognize your own sins, that you cannot, you cannot save yourself from your own sins. Only by the blood of Jesus can your sins be remitted. That if you place your faith in Jesus whom we preach, you will be saved. Simply prayers, very simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I recognize my sins. I cannot in no way cleanse my own sins. So I place my faith in you and in the confidence of your blood. And I know that if you will save me, I will be saved. I receive your pardon in my heart. And by faith I declare I am born again of the nature of God. Wherever you may be hearing me from, if you are you don't have uh, a place of worship, find one. Find one that preaches from the Bible. Find one that believes in the power of the Holy Spirit. Or else if you live in our environment, come in our midst. You'll be greatly blessed by the teaching and the preaching of the unadulterated word of God. The word of God is not watered down. And you too will become a partaker to be kept from the evil one. It says, Keep them from the evil one. The Lord Jesus prayed. Look at verse number 16 of John 17. They are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, I have also sent them into the world. And for their sake, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone. Watch it. I do not what? I do not what? I do not pray for these alone. So church folks, don't become too selfish. Watch it. But also for those who will believe in me through their word. So there are people yet to come into faith and burden. Jesus already covered them in prayer. That they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me. And I in you. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that you sent me. Amen. Now, oftentimes times somebody is asked me after the demise of another person. Uh, uh, did, did they go to heaven? And wisely, I have always said. You'll be surprised at who you find there. And you'll be very surprised at who you want. And you'll be much surprised when you get there. Don't be too quick to judge. 
Don't place people in heaven or hell based upon your last testament of them. Because even in the subconscious state of man, man can offer prayer. Paul says, of the things we ask or think according to his power that is inside us. So prayer is not only spoken, prayer can be taught. And if prayer can be taught, somebody in their comatose state can call upon God and deliverance shall come towards them. Yes, they may not live, they may die, but guaranteed if they call upon the name of the Lord, they are saved in as much as you are. So then the person may say, so where is the justification here that I have come, I've been serving God since the age of 14. And somebody's been crooked all their life. And God allows them. I want you to measure the word mercy. And see if you can find where it lasts. And if you can find the borders of mercy where it lasts. I would like to meet you there. God is the only engineer of his judgment. But he's the only controller of his mercy. And he said, I will give mercy to him. I will give mercy. There are people, you look at them. Uh, they don't deserve mercy at all. To your expectation and to mine. But when you find a person that God is showing mercy to. And you treat them as speak judgment on them. You're cutting yourself off. The church of the Lord Jesus is bathed in mercy. The judgment of the church was satisfied on Calvary. All who believe in Jesus are exempted from that judgment. And the Lord prayed not only for the believers of his day, but also for those who are yet to come. Or oh, may we understand that our prayers will bring them in, into the kingdom. Amen. There's a force of intercession that when made in the earth carries tremendous weight in the heavenlies. It makes weak people strong. Joel said that. Let the weak say I am strong. It makes unsaved people get saved it makes the sick get healed it makes the poor find the riches of god it is only by the mercy of god through people that pray now i'm going to throw in some shockers um just give me two three minutes i'll be done no, in, no revival comes, watch this, no revival comes automatically. Revivals do not just automatically come. A move of God do not just automatically prevail in our earth. Moves of God come by reason of men and women engaging the presence of God. The Scottish preacher said, give me Scotland or I die. The Jonathan Edwards of our time prayed and preached sinners in the hands of an angry God. It birthed revival. The Finnies of their days and the Jacob Sakis of our time. We will not relent until heaven gives us power that we may push the dark forces backwards and advance the kingdom of God. There's no need talking about the historicity of people who trailblaze revival. When we are alive, it is an insult upon our living that we don't pay the price. It's not pride to put my name. It says I am available whether my body feels infirm or not to pray because it is the only weapon left for the church. You realize before the Lord left the earth, he called them and he taught them how to pray. I must teach you also how to pray. I've never taught anybody how to preach. I teach them how to study and how to pray. 
I may correct a few things, but cardinally, the preaching power inside them comes by reason of fueling it with prayer. By the power of intercession, a church under lockdown would break the lockdown. We'll find that the doors are locked, but the people will be outside. <laughs> Preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We must hunker deep down for our love for the gospel. You no, know, coming up in ministry, it wasn't about clothes and shoes and cars and houses and lands and so forth. Uh, it was just purely for the to answer in obedience a call to God. But I undoubtedly I say that he who has left houses and lands and fathers and mothers and brothers. And so some of you have not left anything. For the kingdom. Is the Bible says. God will bless your life. Not through trickery and games and you know, swindling people. No that's what we're talking about. God will bless your life. There's something you're looking for. God can worry somebody about it to come and give it to you. But it takes the potency of prayer. The edge, uh, earnestness of prayer. The agent cry into the womb of eternity. Let God arise. If you can join me to pray for a few minutes, we'll all pray together that this evil that prevails in our society would have no standing at all. It's living the earth. It came, I heard a man of God say that he saw, he saw an, an, a creature going up into the heavens that had three tails. On, on one tail, one tail was Holiness written on it. On the other tail was finances. On the last tail was health. So the, the power of this evil dragon was to make sure that all these three areas were crippled. But by intercession, but by prayer, in my literal vernacular Akanfanti language. The word intercession is Uzima. It means to eat on behalf of another. But in literal sense, it means to stand on behalf of another. Oh, Father. This is the hour that moves and changes the world. Let's go into prayer. Cut. This has been the television broadcast series of the Fresh Fire Worldwide Ministries. Fresh Fire Worldwide Ministries, bringing salvation, healing, and deliverance.